Hello, this is Sean Mullery from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo and in this particular lesson I'm going to be just explaining to you a little bit about compiling C for embedded systems and again this will just be a short introduction to it and uh, we'll be going into more detail in further um, videos. So firstly I'm going to explain to you what, um, what the compiler actually does. Okay, so what does the compiler do? I'm then going to tell you a little bit about two different types of compiler. One is a native compiler and the other is a cross compiler and it's very important that you understand the distinction between the two. And finally, we want to just have a bit of an idea about what does the compiler actually output and what we mean by that is what sort of files do we expect to get from the compiler or that we will need to use, okay? So to start with, uh, firstly, what does the, uh, a compiler actually do? Now, this is a little bit uh, difficult because the term compiler has two meanings in general use. Um, sometimes people refer to the compiler as the whole development system um, that's used to turn C code into machine code or into the code that the, uh, the computer will actually run. Okay, so people often refer to the compiler as the entire system. And whether that's right or wrong is neither here nor there. Uh, it's important that you realize that when people talk about the compiler, they often mean the entire system. So you need to be aware of that. However, oftentimes, uh, again, the compiler is, is also used to describe only one small part of that process. And I'll give you another video on that later to describe where that fits in as the small part of the overall build process, but it's just important for the moment to know that um, both of those meanings are in general use for the compiler, so you need to be aware of both of them, okay? So in, in the second case, the compiler is one small, small part of the overall compiler as we refer to it. Now, <clears throat> this brings us on to uh, the two different kind of um, types of compiler that you could come across, which one is a native compiler and the other is a cross compiler. Now a native compiler is a compiler that compiles and runs on the same machine. Okay, so you develop your program, you compile it, and you run it all on the one type of machine. Okay, it doesn't have to be the exact same machine, but the same type of machine. So an example of that would be the dev C++ compiler that many of you used with me in a previous subject. Okay, just to remind you again that although it is the dev C++ compiler, it also contained a C compiler uh, within that, and that was the compiler we were using, the C compiler, not the C++, because we, we weren't actually using C++ programming, uh, the programming language. But the dev C++ compiler um, that many of you used previously is an example of this. Other examples are there's, there's Microsoft have a compiler, Borland uh, have a compiler, and GCC is another compiler. Um, all of these um, can be used as native compilers uh, on a particular machine. So going back to the dev C++ compiler as an example, you, you, you write your code on a Windows PC, um, and you run the executable on the same Windows PC, or you can take it to another Windows PC where it should work. Uh, the only thing that um, is that if the, the Windows is a different version, it may have issues, but other than that, it should work. Now, that's a native compiler, and you can understand the word native means that you're, you're sticking to the computer that you started on. Now, a cross compiler is different. This is one where you develop and compile on one machine, but the plan is to run it on a different machine. And when I say the plan is to run it, um, it, it wouldn't actually run on the same machine as you're developing it on. So an example of this is the one that we're going to be using um, most of the time in this subject, which is the Microchip MPLAB X uh, and XCA compiler. Uh, that's a big mouthful to hear all at once, and I'll be doing a, a, another video to explain a little bit to you about that and how the, how the, what those different terms mean. But um, this uh, it can be installed on a Windows PC where you do your development. So you write your program and you compile it there. However, it produces machine code for the PIC family of microcontrollers, which is the type of hardware that we're generally going to look at within this subject. And as I said previously uh, in, in other recordings, um, we, we, we don't want to become too concerned with one specific piece of hardware. We do need to be aware that we're trying to write programs that are portable to other pieces of hardware as well. But uh, in the main, um, to in order to use some example hardware, we'll be using the PIC family of microcontrollers. So we do our development on the Windows PC, but we compile it for 
the uh, for a different uh, platform which is the pick microcontroller so you might have a small little electronics board who want these microcontrollers on it uh, just to mention by the way that uh, that microchip mp lab x and xc8 compiler and um, while i've said windows pc there because that's what we will have in the college that is also available for mac and for linux based machines as well now um just uh, just to mention that um or to, to come to this final section, which is what is the output of the compiler? And while I'm going to go down through this slide, I'm also going to show you uh, the two different types of compiler so that you see the output from it. So if we assume the first use of the word compiler, which is we're, we're describing the compiler as the overall system, okay, the overall development system, the native compi compiler such as dev C++ produces um, an executable file. Um, and uh, on Windows, that would be a .exe file. Okay, this should then run on any, on any Windows PC. So just very quickly, I'm just going to um, swap over to my uh, dev C compiler here, which I'm running. And uh, I think I have a window open here. Uh, so I have a simple hello world program, as you can see there. And you can see in the directory where that hello world program uh, is actually sitting. Okay, now, what I'm going to do, rather than the standard compile and run, which is what we always did previously, I'm just going to do a compile just to show you, um, because previously what would happen is you compile it and then you'd run it as well. You do that all in one go. I'm just going to compile. And if you watch the um, the window over here, you'll see that all of a sudden we have a second file after being created there. Just in case you missed that, we can watch it again. So I'm just going to delete that. and we'll uh, do a compile again. So just watch that window as we go, and you should see that second file appear there, okay? So that is the application, and it has the, the exact timestamp of when it was done. Now, that is a .exe file. Um, if, if we were shown the extensions here, we would actually see .exe written on the end of that. Uh, I don't have that set up on this machine at the moment, uh, that the folders will actually show the extensions. But you can see that uh, Windows considers that uh, an application file. Now, you'll be wary if you try and email these to people. Uh, generally, people are very, um, email systems are very concerned about getting an executable file because of the damage they can do, because they can run straight away on a Windows machine. So um, they'll be wary of them. But basically, we can double click on that. And you can see that it, uh, it does the hello world. And so that would work even if DevC was not open. And in fact, just to prove that to you, I'm going to close down DevC at this point and just click the hello world program and up it pops. Okay, so that's the executable file that's created and that runs on a Windows machine and it should strictly speaking run on another Windows machine as long as it wasn't a different version of Windows. And even if it was, it's still likely to run because it wouldn't rely on anything um, too specific to any version. Now, example of the cross compiler, my apologies if uh, I need to go back there. Uh, an example of the cross compiler, uh, which we said was the MPLAB X and the XCA compiler, uh, this produces a file containing uh, the machine code, which can then be programmed into the microcontroller. So you need a special device to get it off your machine that you developed it on and onto the piece of hardware. Um, the in this case, the file that's created um, for the PIC microcontroller, this will take the form of a hex file or a .hex file. Now, the compilers all produce lots of other different files as well. They're capable of producing them, and in many cases, they will produce them, or, and we may not use them, or they might be used internally in some process. But the important one for us in this particular case is the .hex file, because that's the file that we're going to use, uh, or that we could use to transfer onto the piece of hardware to actually get it to work. So this contains the actual um, hex codes or machine instructions for the PIC. So again, I'm just going to um, pop over here until I see my MP Lab X. That's it open there. And don't worry too much about what you're looking at there, uh, but that's the environment that you're going to be using. And uh, what I'm going to do is, th this is a slower compile process. So I'm just going to, um, to uh, hit build there on that so that it starts building. And while it's doing that, I'm going to open the directory where it puts things. It's into this production directory. And you'll start to see it populated with lots of different files that it makes. But it's the .hex file that we're the most interested in. And you can see it there. I've highlighted it there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open it quickly. 
um, just to give you a look at it. I'm going to open it in Notepad um, because it literally is just a lot of hex digits. So if you went through them, every one of those digits is either a number 0 to 9 or A to F. So it's a hex digit. So each one of those can be turned into four individual binary bits. Um, so, so, so that it has that code. And that is what actually gets loaded into the microcontroller in order to tell the microcontroller what to do. OK, so that's its program. But again, you would need a system to actually deliver that down onto the chip so that when the chip switches on, that program automatically executes. Um, and this is the difference between a, a development system for cross compiling. Uh, so compiling for something on, on the chip um, versus the native compiler. Now, you may well wonder, well, why don't we just develop it all on the one machine? Why don't we develop it on the PIC microcontroller? Well, the problem is, the PIC microcontroller, you wouldn't be able to install the development system on it because it's just way too limited. Uh, it doesn't have naturally have a keyboard or a mouse or a, a, a monitor for you to actually develop it on and so on. It's too limited. So therefore, we would develop on a PC in order to bring it down onto that system. OK. And so that ends that, uh, that particular section. So just to remind you what we looked at in this particular thing is we looked at you know, the, you know, what a compiler does, and we mentioned that it is kind of two different meanings. We specifically talked about the difference between native and cross compilers, so it's important that you're aware of what those are. And we talked about some of the outputs that you would get from a compiler, the important outputs that we might need to deal with. Again, there are other outputs as well, but uh, we want to stick to just the ones we're concerned about for the moment. Okay, thank you.